Good afternoon and welcome to our fourth day of uh, webinar series from our virtual Exo Digital Leadership Summit. Uh, today we will have a very interesting inside talk with Renata Dadic from Deutsche Bank, uh, together with uh, Sascha Kurpis from uh, Exo Digital on the topic Matic. But uh, before we go um, into that topic, I would like to give you a brief uh, overview about our past and upcoming webinars in our series of uh, webinars that we hold instead of our uh, real XU Leadership Summit this year due to the uh, Corona pandemic. So um, yeah, we had, uh, as you can see, we recorded everything uh, from the beginning of the week uh, up to yesterday. So don't miss the interesting keynote that we had with uh, Dirk Bloss on Monday. Then also the very nice uh, webinar with uh, Quantilope and the founder from Quantilope, Peter Ashmanite. And uh, on Tuesday, we had a very interesting uh, webinar with Mirko Holper, the founder of Brandmaker, MRM, always a very important topic. And then yesterday, we had a, um, who doesn't uh, know about uh, digital experience management, um, should basically take a look at that webinar from uh, Content Pepper, with the co-founder of Content Pepper, Mark uh, Tislik. And uh, Patrick Rembe from um, uh, TMD Friction, the brake manufacturer, uh, basically uh, telling us uh, about the um, uh, all the difficulties that you uh, should uh, tackle there. Um, yeah, and then today we will have uh, in a minute uh, the webinar with Renata and Sasha. And tomorrow, don't miss the keynote from Scott Brinker. Uh, Chief editor at uh, uh, Chief Martech and the basically the creator of the Martech landscape. And we will also in our presentation today uh, learn a little bit more about the Martech landscape and uh, why it's so important to uh, basically look at it. So let's back to today's topic: um, marketing technology as a backbone for future marketing processes. As we all might meanwhile have experienced, digitalization and automation uh, is already impacting agencies, marketing departments, and the, and the way how they work together. And uh, I would say we don't need a crystal ball to predict that this will be uh, influencing them uh, in the future even more and more. So uh, let's hear from Renata and Sasha how to uh, basically tackle this challenge. And let me introduce Renata Dadic uh, from Deutsche Bank. She's working since uh, more than 20 years now for Deutsche Bank and is uh, basically at the moment in the position uh, of the head of digital marketing. And on the other hand, we have uh, Sascha Kurfis. Uh, he's basically looking at this topic a little bit more from the agency side uh, as he has a, a, a basically a 20 years background of agencies uh, working for J. Walter Thompson and uh, Jung von Matt, uh, where he at the end did lead the Shanghai office. So he has also some China market experience. And uh, he is now working since uh, one and a half year uh, for uh, Exco Digital. And uh, so I would hand over to Sasha and uh, let's see what uh, we can get and learn today from our today's webinar. Okay, thank you very much for the warm welcome. Give me just a second to start my screen here. So we have everything in order. Okay, so first of all, okay, hello as well from my side and hello to my lovely guests today and also to Renata especially. So hello, Renata. Um, when we had our first conversation, we were um, quickly leaving the original topic to discuss a lot of other things around marketing in general. Therefore, we wanted our webinar today to be a bit more like uh, a discussion. So what we are doing today is to give you a short seven slide introduction to the overall topic of MarTech and why we believe that this is the backbone to any future marketing processes. And after this, uh, let's say around about eight to 10 minutes, we will share a rough blueprint 
with five steps in how to start your own journey into MarTech strategy. And Renata will give us first-hand insights what worked at Deutsche Bank and especially what failed. Since we all know that the fails are the most interesting stories when we want to learn and uh, get better. So let's start and um, to talk about why MarTech is so important. Today, one of the biggest problems is to deliver. So marketeers today have to manage 12 times more agencies and six times as many projects in 15% of the time as in 10 years ago to one of the recent studies. So there's a growing complexity in channels where we need specialists to be also more efficient. Unfortunately, specialists and capabilities we mostly do not have at hand and they are hard to get anyways. So that's why most CMOs now plan to invest significantly in marketing technology for support and automation. Even in Germany, which is compared to the UK and the US a little bit behind, uh, but 53% of CMOs also in Germany plan to invest more budget now in marketing. Why do they do it? Um, so here are the four most important objectives according to um, the 2018 Gartner study, which are desired when talking about digitalization in marketing. Uh, first of all, how to get more efficient. Uh, the second one is how to increase my ROI. Next one is make better and faster decisions. And at the end, give me a competitive advantage. But let's take it a bit higher. What is actually the holy grail in marketing? What everybody is hoping for is a marketing ecosystem in which we get real-time data and transparency of what's going on. And of course, to make real-time decisions based on it. So to help us work on this topic, I like this simplified chart about uh, the five pillars on how you can cluster this. Uh, the basic foundation layers are data management and analytic capabilities to get more transparency. followed by plan and manage to organize your communications. So you can call uh, also call it MRM or marketing resource management. Once you have that, you need the best solutions to target your goals uh, and target groups. Finally, you go to the infight in each channel to engage your customers for reaction and response. And at the end, you are collecting all sorts of data that should form a closed system. If done properly, you get very close to real-time marketing. And most importantly, you would be in control of most of your data. But Houston, we have a problem here, and the problem has a name. Uh, the name is actually Scott Brinker, who made this chart since 2008. And the, by the way, is giving our closing keynote tomorrow. So according to him, marketing is becoming a technical discipline, which most of us are I guess, uh, not properly trained. And uh, there are only about 8,000 or more than 8,000 tech solutions out there from which we need to choose now. And this is making CMO life pretty challenging these days. But on top of that, that's not all. So when we finally choose the right solutions, 52% of these MarTech projects fail due to the lack of overall integration into existing systems. So most of you might know this problem as legacy IT, meaning old systems and the politics around it in uh, bigger organizations. So how to do it right? How to start with implementing MarTech the right way? Um, we are now going to show you a simple five-step blueprint that will help you to start. And for each topic, Renata will give hands-on insights about how she and her team at Deutsche Bank approach this and also what other kind of obstacles you need to pay attention to. Um, please, if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask them directly now in or, uh, during the session uh, in the Q&A chat, which is probably opening now from the moderators. And also the moderators will keep uh, your, your questions uh, for our discussion later at the end when we try to answer all of the questions that pop up uh, during the session. So let's get in and start with the blueprint. Step one, create your first version of a MarTech plan. Actually, this is the most, I would say, complicated 
step, of course, like most of the first steps are a bit more complicated. To start with this step, it is necessary that you identify all the marketing technologies you are using. And uh, do not forget the tools actually used by external service providers, for example, newsletter tools from external agencies. This is called your MarTech stack and helps you organize yourself in your coming tasks. But do not worry if your first version is not complete. You will anyway find more tech on your way. And also this MarTech stack will change over time because you are starting now to optimize it. So here you see an example that I like to use quite often because it clusters it for me at least in a, in a quite convenient way through contacts, connections, content, customer data or collaboration. However, there are other ways of structuring it if you like, but if it doesn't really fit your thinking, um, there are many inspirations from our tech. Uh, stacks out there. So simply visit the what's so called stacky awards where the best stacks are rewarded. So here you see a couple of interesting ones that I put together. I promise it's quite interesting to look into them and to find the right layout uh, for you to, to go ahead with this topic. What you also need to consider, and this is probably a little bit more complex, um, is the part, do I have a data strategy? In my opinion, and what I see out there is that a lot of companies have no real data strategy, at least not the data strategy I, th or I think or we think is, is, uh, is, is, is enough. Uh, maybe first of all, we have to say, do, do not confuse digital strategy with data strategy because there's different things. The digital strategy refers to digitalization of business processes using new technologies or the development of new digital channels. A data strategy, on the other hand, is a special business plan for the profit-oriented use of your data, which is virtually a byproduct of communication or digitalization of communication. So if you have a data strategy, it will help you to specify much more clearer how to store and handle data within your MarTech ecosystem. But if you do not have a data strategy at this point, don't worry for now, you can just move on to build your MarTech strategy without it and solve this problem later. But don't postpone it for too long since your MarTech tools, usually they create a lot of data and it's getting you into trouble if you, you know, pile up much more data and don't know really what to do with it. And last but not least, you need to start finally put everything together in a, in a kind of roadmap. For example, this is just one version we are using. It can look like this or any other timeline chart you like. Only two things are important. You are planning infrastructure. So think of two to three years also from a budget point of view. I think we will really also talk a bit about this later, um, but also think about your workforce. Since this is not just, and that's maybe my, my point from agency, uh, it's not like don't think in three months or six months like campaigns or projects would be. It's a much longer uh, um, uh, project, an ongoing uh, project. And at the beginning, it will need usually more workforce than you have. So you need to cover this. Otherwise, projects will kind of fall apart if you don't have enough workforce to support it. So this is the first you know, step for the blueprint. And now I would like to hand over first time also to Renata and to ask her, so how did you start at Deutsche Bank? Did you have all this in mind or was it just stumbling by accident on, on, on top of it? <laughs> I won't say stumbling by accident, but uh, we haven't all uh, at the start uh, or the, the whole roadmap for us at the start. So uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me and uh, really an interesting part and interesting topic about the marketing tech stack because as uh, Sasha, you also said, the marketing technology landscape is getting uh, bigger and bigger each year and the same procedure was also here at, at Deutsche and uh, we started I think uh, six year ago, uh, six, seven years ago, where we um, are looking for, not for a MarTech, but for an ad tech solution and a solution on a, a full stack program or full stack suite. I think uh, when you have um, in, in mind that you want to organize all the channels you want to uh, pursue with, with your customer and also with your, uh, with your target group, um, not only on paid uh, for marketing, but also with your clients um, for uh, customer relationship management. Um, you see a big part of it and a big picture on it. And uh, this, was, this was the first 
part i think we we can um, make it better the next the next uh, the next projects or the next um, use cases to build up on use cases not on the on the on the full uh, technology to to buy a technology and say okay there's a technology part in it uh, you have to use it now um, but to and to implement it, but to see okay which use case you want to see. So as you see, uh, build your roadmap. Uh, take a basic part on it. Take a a quick win uh, where is um, some motivation also for the employees on it to to work on the project and to see that it that it works also for a for a big um, uh, corporate as as Deutsche or others. Um, where are uh, where many um, boards are necessary to have the right use cases, the right implementation parts, the budget. We will come later to to this, Sasha, um, and to have really a step by step guide. Uh, it's not easy to um, to say to the senior manager, um, yes, uh, you have a target a goal and it's it's big and it's really good, but to to reach this target and to reach this uh, this uh, opportunity, you will take a little step one step uh, to another because um, we started uh, at first with a small use case only with our uh, newsletter um, sent out and um, this was a small in in a closed use case focused use case with uh, two three departments working on it from IT from the sales department and also from the marketing department and then we worked on it and see okay how um, what uh, do we need to purchase our newsletter to our customer for the first time and then to our prospects and um, even this small uh, project or small use case took us uh, nine months uh, to see uh, to implement the technology to um, uh, install the control functions opportunities you need to to push the emails through and to make a target operating model on it because you are working a, a different way till before because uh, you have to see uh, who will um, make the workflow? Who will make the template for the newsletter? And this is um, you also have to to build not uh, only a technology roadmap uh, or technologist roadmap, but also a operating roadmap. How will it work after the implementation? Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I, I was just stumbling upon when you said we started with edtech um, <laughs> because I had this um, this feeling all the time that I, I there was a big confusion about what is actually MarTech and what is EdTech and what, how they, do they actually connect together. And um, But I, I guess that a lot of uh, people who probably are joined uh, now have, you know, some connections with, with EdTech because that's why it starts, because there's lots of budget in EdTech. And uh, at the moment we are trying to get everything together because the MarTech part is more or less the processing part behind it while the EdTech is still more let's say ai driven and budget driven and so on and uh, right. but yes i think everybody will start it soon at, at some point um we have this very often that uh, that um, it starts with one small project small quick win hopefully and then at the end they understand the bigger picture why they actually need a bigger roadmap why they actually need the other points and um, so yeah it's it's very good to see that it starts more or less same everywhere <laughs> Maybe let's come back to this point at the um, um, at the end. If there are some questions around it, uh, I would presume now with the with the second um, um, part of the blueprint, which is actually the Martech board, and I share this with you now. So, okay, step two is how to create actually a Martech board, and we also discussed this in the beginning, uh, bef shortly before the, the webinar, that um, it's usually a big big trouble in 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 companies because it's um, there are a lot of silos and a lot of people involved usually cmos and cios and of course the cfo also because of budgeting and so on um, therefore we 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 know or actually we believe that you need to have um uh, to create a martech board that has some responsibility that you share with them or that you give them that they uh, take over from from you if you are CMO or if you are CIO. Um, the experience shows that there is an enormous pressure in marketing to change fast, especially. And the larger the organization, the more tools are implemented just quickly without considering the overall ecosystem. And you mentioned my, my, my most beloved uh, example, the newsletter system, which usually has lots of agency have different newsletters. And so the data is all with the agencies and not with the client which is good for the agencies and not always good for the client. So 
this is the first start just to think about what tools can we use as as a core you know as a backbone and start from there let all the others work in our tools so that we are more uh, in control of data in in the end so but in an ideal world the cmo and the cio actually um, need to work a bit more together than they are used to i think in the past and and from our side we would recommend them together to install which we call a martech board uh, to handle the growing ecosystem um, and the uh, and the martech board actually should consist at least of let's say uh, the, the most important representatives which would be probably marketing it and sales but they could be others like pr and so on as well depending on who's or, you know, in, into the project or who was actually all in, in the backbone integrated. But um, the point of the Marte Council is not, maybe that's hopefully not, not to get it wrong, the, the, the point of the Marte Council is, or the Marte Board, is not to determine the budgets or to make the ultimate decision for the selection of the, the technology. It's like shown in the chart, is they have to align actually um, the technology, they have to check that it works across the functional areas and they have to make sure that it works effectively. Yeah, so that it is, is, is um, uh, that the capabilities and the integrations are understood and, and used efficiently from all the people. Because if you have just good technology, it's nice, but if the people don't use it well, we know it from the old intranet days, uh, it's just wasted money in technology. So my question to, to you, Renata, is, uh, how did you handle this growing ecosystem? Did you, did you try to install something or is it that it come naturally. <laughs> uh, we tried uh, in the beginning, uh, as in every project, uh, with a, a, st a steering committee, and uh, it it wasn't a, mar a marketing board uh, uh, or a martech board, board, but it was uh, a relevant part of it uh, to have the the mentioned department, as you said, sales, IT. And marketing in one um, round table in one meeting room to speak about and that was the fail uh, to speaking about the technology because uh, we didn't uh, had um, a look on it on our processes we didn't had a look on in this uh, in this case on the the inefficiency we have in our processes we build a technology and implemented a technology um, we learned uh, in, in a quite, uh, I think, uh, three or four months, uh, a lot about it because uh, the technology was there. And you said, Sasha, it's quite great to have a good technology, but if you don't use it uh, in an effective uh, way, um, it's uh, a fail or it's uh, it's not it's not good to to use it in such such a way. Uh, so we. Um, stuck over to uh, to a round table with the stakeholders um, not going only on a senior management level but really to uh, to speak with these guys and 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 colleagues who are using this technology uh, starting also with our newsletter uh, a use case um, take them together um, to see how are they using this technology? Is it e efficient enough? Um, also with um, the uh, the help of our vendor uh, in this case, to see where are uh, more efficiently uh, efficient uh, points on on the on the technology to use it uh, quite more better. Um, we said we now see that if you want to go to a to a, in in the in the in, to the to the target goal or to the target roadmap uh, that you need um, a little bit more um, again senior management attention and uh, we lost it in our way uh, building a more operating a model operating board and not to have a strategic board uh, so we are now working on it to implement a strategic board uh, to see um, which uh, platform do we want to use, but not on a technolo technology side, but to see how are the processes in the departments, uh, what are we are using now to close the gaps, and also to see which uh, processes or technology are in the different departments, because we are not only implementing a platform for Deutsche, but also for Postbank, Norisbank. They are all using the same platform, and uh, this is a quite a um, little bit more um, um, uh, 
bigger idea to to implement a platform for the whole corporate Deutsche Bank and uh, its departments. But uh, for this, you need a strategic board where all the product owners, for example, or the development um, uh, department um, objectives, you need to go to to uh, to bring them together to a table to see where we want to um, make a new roadmap or to to implement a new roadmap to see is the roadmap the quite um, quite uh, good enough or flexible enough uh, for this case as now, for example, Corona or a new budget or resource um, uh, efficiency that you have to, to go th through. So uh, I think on the operational part, we are uh, good situated for now with the round table, but uh, on the strategic part, we need a lot more senior management attention for now to go the next step. I think it's also a little bit what we are seeing. So we see at the beginning when it comes out of the project is a more practical oriented board. You know, when you have to right. get the people together, they're, they're like, in Germany we would say it's like a speedboat. They're running around to, you know, make everybody happy and try to help everybody to actually to adjust to this new kind of technology and use the process in the right way. And once it works, after a while, it's kind of an automatically, uh, an automatic process where it gets Maybe too usual, and then and then the strategic thoughts got a little bit lost. It's then then more drained into the day-to-day -day, uh, business. And I think it's very good also from 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 your side to see that sooner or later you need it more on a strategic level. You need to take this uh, board team a bit more um, closer to the strategic and business decisions. Otherwise, it will sooner or later sooner or later end probably in the IT department, and then uh, you have the problem again. Uh, very good. So let's um, let's go to the uh, third point, which is um, after you manage to uh, to to get this aligned, then uh, you need to do a project. Uh, mostly, as you already said, um, the first project is uh, a project by accident or, or there was a big pain point in the department where you have to do something. But if you start on the, from from scratch, it should be a quick win project. A quick win project because of well, many reasons. Mostly, it's a psychological reason. If you if you fail to deliver a very fast uh, win that gives some value to people, people tend to think it's a stupid idea anyway, even if it's a smart one. So. That's why I said we always say this. Even this, if, even this topic seems like a no-brainer. I will see this fail much too often. So please think twice with what you start. Make sure that your first project is a positive win for the whole team, and try make it quick. So don't take a big project that takes a year or two or something. So start with something that is it done in three to six months and try to push it so it will create some momentum. Uh, because if you start with a quick win. The momentum for your whole MarTech roadmap, how are you going to call it, is, is there and then you have the possibility to do it. Um, you can see on the on the chart I just put together. So these are the three most important topics like value or cost and feasibility and collective impact that you can double check on if it's really worth the effort to make this your quick win project. But if you don't know where to start, uh, from my point, I would recommend something like transparency. So if you look into uh, the old chart that the chart I showed you before is uh, so analytic and data uh, management or data asset management is a simple and easy way to start because transparency is always the beginning of you know people to look out of their silos if something is is, is transparent. So for example data as a management system, system or if you use commonly used dashboards that's something it's a, it's an easy start at least for for some people. If you don't have a special pay point I recommend probably to go in one of these directions. Um, Renato, how is it with you? I mean, you, you started with one project, which was AdTech. Is there uh, also something when you say, you know, quick win is always helpful and which would it be for you? Um, quick win is always uh, helpful because you, you can motiva motivate your project uh, team to work on, on other quick wins and to work on a, on a larger project, which is not a quick win uh, uh, Almost so, uh, almost the time. Um, so I think it's uh, it's good to have a quick win and uh, also a roadmap to see which is uh, which are the biggest uh, the big uh, processes and the big projects on it or the big use cases and which are the quick wins to have to have some uh, to to find some breathe um, and to find and to to implement a, a good um, good opportunity and a good operating model also with the close departments you have to work on it. So um, we started um, 
uh, with the data asset management also the um, to connect it uh, with our um, content management system, um, which is um, easy if when you have a, a larger marketing suite, for example. But uh, to use the, uh, the data asset management also um, uh, is uh, quite uh, interesting. Uh, so um, we had the the part on it, and you said it uh, two three slides before uh, because of the data strategy. It's good to have um, uh, technology, or good to see uh, which use cases you have. But what will you do? What will will, uh, will you do in the in the future with this data? And this was also um, a learning for us uh, to, to to see. Okay, it's. Um, quite good to have the data in-house. Um, I will make it uh, every time the same time again, the newsletter data. I think it's good to have it in-house and to to scratch it and to see how the data is working with our customer data. Um, but uh, you have to um, model it. You have to store it in your uh, customer data warehouse to, to make it um, working for you. And um, this was one learning for us to have a quick win simple right but also to see what are the features you have behind to make the data working for you and uh, we also started with the data asset management as i said and uh, now we are looking for um quite it's it's a simple quick win uh, as auto cropping uh, smart cropping for our okay, content yeah. management system um which is um, for us uh, for our production a uh, Big uh, quick win. What is the, uh, the the cost part? The cost part will be um, uh, really really good and efficient, uh, better for us. Um, but we didn't have it on our roadmap till now because we um, didn't ask the production what is their uh, their pain point. Um, I think this is also learning for us to look a much more um, a bigger on this picture and also to see the operating model and the production part in it and not only the ad tech, um, this was one learning, also one learning for us, not only the ad tech, but also the processes behind them. And um, as um, Michael said, you had the also the uh, Mirko uh, from Brandmaker here, uh, also the all the processes and the tr transparency you need on the data, which is what is uh, quite a big problem uh, for, for the web part. Um, in in the big corporates because we have the data, but we can't use it in this full way. So the next part will be um, the anal analytic part to mm -hmm. see how we can connect this data to our customer data, which is not a quick win. Um, don't get me wrong, but uh, it's a quite inter interesting part in it. Um, but it's uh, one part to see how a quick win can increase to a bigger project. Mm, yeah, I, well, anyway, to, to, to actually co connect the data you are actually putting or uh, you're actually um, setting up in-house with the, with the external or with the, with the personal data, that's anyway, I think the last and then the, the hottest topic, how to get that done. But if you don't make the homework, it will never work anyways. Right. Um, I just said one thing. So uh, did you also had a feeling there was a pull effect? Because what we are seeing sometimes is when you start in a small group and then you open it up, say that especially with transparency in data asset management, some other units uh, or, or departments say, oh, cool, we want to be part of it. Can we, mm. can we jump on? So we had, with, with, I think with two or three clients, we had this, they had to stop their project for two months because so many people want to jump on, yeah, because it, they, they, they had the need, but nobody was addressing it before to them. Yes. At, at last, uh, it, it is so. So um, we started, uh, as I said, uh, six years ago, and was uh, we were the the first department uh, working uh, on this on this part and on this uh, on this project. And uh, we are now seeing after six years. Uh, so we uh, we took a little bit, <laughs> perhaps too long for it, but that we have a, a platform or build up a platform, and we are not making much more uh, marketing for it. So um, they are coming to us because they have um, all the departments have the the pain point with budget. Uh, they don't have the budget they have uh, six years ago. So you can't have your platform in each department and uh, work with this platform or with this vendor. You need a, a, a full sized um, um, project or uh, opportunity 
to 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 work with it. They have um, um, kind less resources and uh, capabilities in their teams for now um, in the last uh, years also um, by restructured uh, teams or restructured organizations. And also um, what we also see that the departments um, before worked uh, with a lot of agencies. We I think uh, in we had a really a, a kind uh, of agency full stack uh, and and a roadmap with I think more than 25 agencies in the start for for each point you need in, in marketing but um, as I said budget and resources are uh, are not um, growing uh, in the next years so um, we are focusing on our agency hothouse and when you are focusing you also have to um, see which capabilities you need in-house or which capabilities also in the data you need in-house to um, make it working for you. And um, I think uh, that is at least uh, one opportunity for us uh, also in the future to see how we can um, build something up, a platform, a process, but make it working for all the other departments also. Uh, it can't be an, um, an, an process only for Deutsche at private bank, but it also has to work for Postbank, for corporate bank. And uh, to, to, to speak also about uh, with the other stakeholders is, is uh, a relevant topic uh, in this project when you want to implement a marketing technology. Mm, I, yeah, we, I, we totally see that as well. Maybe it's also very helpful as a, as a kickoff to our next topic because when the next topic is empower your team. And I think when you have an empowered team, it helps you a lot that these kind of things grow to the next level. Um, let's go to the to the step four when mm. um, I want to quickly or let's talk really about how to empower your team. And there is a um, quite nice um, uh, yeah, let's say chart, uh, which I actually steal from Scott Brinker uh, again, and um, it's it's it shows a little bit how to make stronger cooperations of silos and uh, what Martech is actually can help. So um, hopefully, after you made your quick win project, what you can see here is is uh, actually that's something that starts quite natural. Um, it's the way from classic waterfall management to a bit more agile approach. I think. In a lot of times, I hear always, "Ah, you need to invent or I need to implement new work, and then it will start from, 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 from itself." But I don't believe so much into it. I think when it starts with transparency, and that's a little bit what what this kind of uh, chart shows you. Um, so when the first teams get actually supported by tech, so that's the beginning on the left side. Then in the second phase, the tech is integrated, and people start see seeing out of their silos. Actually, that's what you're describing when you have implemented it, and the first people started to see. They, they say, oh, I want to be part of it. I'm not I'm not part of this one. I want to have this as myself. I want to be, I think it has an impact on me. It makes things faster and I see more. So they start naturally go to their colleagues, say, I have seen you have done this. So we have this very often, or the guy in Russia did this and my the it colleague from Italy is coming over and say, I have seen you do it. Can you help me? Before they always had to have meetings to tell them. Now they see it and they come to you, which is the interesting part. So that's what we call more the integrated, where the market helps you to get integrated. Um, but the last phase is that's all that what we are all seeking for this absorbed phase the absorbed phase is more or less when when all the people are used to work in this kind of environment which actually um, helps them naturally that they know how to make the next decision so there uh, you have the the possibilities that they can now act much more on their own uh, and faster so that as management you don't have to give uh, guidance all the time so they can actually do 50% of the work alone because there is a framework uh, which is totally transparent and they can make easy decisions without getting any kicked from from management um what, what do you feel where, where where are you at the moment in this uh, in this uh, chart somewhere on the more left or more right uh, I think uh, um, more in the middle. Um, um, let me let me say how we started it because uh, we started uh, two years ago uh, to implement the digital marketing in our marketing department. So uh, before it was quite on the left side. So you have the marketing department building up the creations, building up the campaigns. Uh, um, as, um, as as we said, they build up the pictures um, and the and the texts. Uh, but uh, you have the management. OK, look at the cost efficiency. Look, uh, look about the processes and you had the technology. OK, we have to um, uh, implement something new, but no one of them um, is working on a 
together on a target. Um, two years ago, we built out the digital marketing um, uh, department, uh, which I am head of, and it's, it was the first time we had also the opportunity to see which skills we need to, to implement uh, such a MarTech mindset, I will see, not, not the technology, it's a mindset. You need, um, for example, an, someone from e-commerce, because e-commerce is a, a little bit more faster in, in, the, in the transformation to, to the technology, also to the MAR technology. You uh, need a networker um, to, to bring all the corporations together, not only on, on the side of your, um, your corporate or uh, the Deutsche Bank, but also to speak up to different uh, agencies, to vendors, to uh, the platforms as um, Google, uh, you name it, uh, there are so many of it. Um, uh, I think Scott uh, can, can tell a little bit more about it. Um, but you need a network. You need a, a understanding about technology and the opportunity technology can give you. Not to be the technologist at it all, but you have to translate your, um, your need as a business, um, uh, your need to a technologist so that they can know what to implement and how to implement it. And the translation, I think it's also a quite um, big um, empowerment for, 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 um, for, for people and for colleagues to, to work on it. Because as you said, uh, when we uh, want to implement something, you need a strong um, project team who has the power also to um, decide some things on its own because uh, if you want to decide something and you have to go only to the management and take uh, the decision from there you won't be motivated at all you um, to to be really good on it um, you need a, a kind of budget where you also can um, test something to see, okay, is it is it good implemented? Does it work? Does it work? Um, um, is it um, an opportunity to be really a better or to, to bring a better process on it or not? And um, it's quite, um, I think we are now so in the middle, but uh, that uh, as when we will have the strategic board, when we now have the um, the uh, technology and also implementing now the uh, the new retail target platform, I think we are on a good way to go to our right side. But you have to empower the team uh, and not to wait uh, for it uh, that the senior management will give you a target goal and you, you will only have to follow this roadmap because you need to be flexible and open-minded. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's also another one to, to the to how to, why you need to empower the team is because of the the ever growing speed in, in, in the world of technology and globalization. So if you I mean with, with the old management process, you will never be able to catch all of the decisions you have, actually right. have to take. I mean, you have to also automate your decisions in, in so to speak, right? And um, which also brings us to the to the to the last topic, which is you need to test and revise and maybe that's the old startup spirit a little bit um, when we you know when 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 you think in the early days you 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 integrated something it worked quite well then then you could go for to sleep you know uh, for a couple of years then then you have to start all over again but this time i think is a bit different so um, i think you should finally all. I mean, I think we all know that, uh, that you never finish. You know, this is this is never end. You need to you need to adapt and 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 check everything all the time. So our world is changing so fast that we all know that a bit of startup culture um, can help. So this is why I, I wrote in there is fail as good as you can or fail forward is also very nice. Uh, speaking about that. Um, therefore, I would encourage everybody um, to, to install an, a kind of improvement cycle, you know, every, I don't know, two to four months, two to three to six months to check actually your, your strategy towards uh, MarTech. And uh, a little bit, as you said, um, Renata, before, it needs to be, so the day-to-day -day business needs to be a bit connected to the strategy so th that you know what, what, what do we want to achieve? How can we make people use it better how can we um, put it on our target for whatever we want to be in a, as a company in five years what kind of products we want to sell in five years it might be very different than today um, and 
the good thing is if you do it in the right way of an ecosystem, there is a lot of things that can be exchangeable. Before it was always big trouble to you know make a new CMS or something, but today you can really install an ecosystem that has a lot of open uh, interfaces that help you to exchange parts of it without big hustle. I mean, depends, but some of it is much easier to do than before. Um, but that means you still need to try and, and you, you still need to fail. And I think it's also something you need to you do more. I fa fail more, but fail forward and fail better. So um, this is already something you, you could implement. I think it's, as a German, it's always hard to fail, but uh, I think failing is part of the game now. I think we can we can fail a little bit more. <laughs> We're not at the, at the end, but we are trying to fail. Um, it's um, interesting to hear it, but we are trying. Um, you said it uh, the right way. Uh, fail forward is um, to test something, to to see what does it work, and to learn from each other. And there's also um, a kind of transparency, not only in the roadmap and not only in the in the strategic part, but also to speak to each other how you are working with uh, technology. How does your process works uh, or, or, or is implementing in in this platform? And um, I think we started uh, with with the operating circle, where, um, for example, the the marketing uh, manager from one department speaks to another and said, "Yeah, when I'm coming." to our newsletter and making the template, I'm looking forward and I go through this workflow and I uh, I see it works better and easier. And the others hear that and also can test it for for, for its uh, for its own newsletter. So um, I, it's a little bit of more of, of learning and, and hearing from each other, how does it work? But um, we are not so far to, to say, OK, let's fail uh, as good as you can, because there are a lot of um, budget and resources in it to, to implement something. So it's um, not 100 percent. I think we are on a good way, so about uh, 40, 50 percent. But um, there's a lot of way to work about it. Probably failing only with a smaller budget is, is a good start, <laughs> I think. Yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. I mean, uh, so this, that, well, that was, um, I'm jumping over to the last chart, actually. Um, uh, now we're at the end, and I hope we could give a, at least a little bit of an overview about this pretty, pretty, I think, big topic. I mean, we could go on and on probably in, for every part of it. There's even sub pages and sub parts to it to tackle it and how to use marketing technology as a process uh, or as a backbone for future marketing process. Um, we would be happy now to cover a couple of hopefully your questions uh, which popped up along the way. I hope there are some questions. Yeah. So for now, yeah, thank, you. Yeah, okay, sure. thank you for your time, <laughs> but uh, shoot your questions and uh, we try to answer them and we are here as I don't know. I'm I'm staying till I question. I uh, answer everything. Yeah, so yeah. Thank, thanks a lot for for this very interesting uh, talk, uh, Renata and and, and Sasha. Um, we have already some questions, and we would like just to start with the uh, first one. Uh, is there a method to measure the ROI of your Martech investment? I think it's more was for Renata. I have no <laughs> measurement for mine in a moment. <laughs> we have a small one. So um, I think, uh, as I said, uh, in the analytic part, we are uh, quite at the beginning, but uh, we uh, see that uh, when we are in a use case and go to the MarTech uh, tech stack, um, we will go also to the point of, um, let's see the, the newsletter part. We will um, also take the data um, of the opening seeing uh, how does our customers relate it uh, on this newsletter and also bringing to it what was the implementing um, the implementation of this uh, feature um, in it how does it how much does it cost how does it how does it works and does uh, are the processes also efficient efficiently better than before um, I think we can be much more uh, uh, much more in detail uh, to to um, bring the ROI to to the to 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 a KPI dashboard, for example, to see okay how uh, can we also make it systematically. Now it's manually, 
um, it uh, it works and it works good, but um, we don't have it um, on one point and it's there and you can see, okay, how is the ROE on a MarTech solution on it for now? Mm -hmm. Maybe also. But we're working on it. I think we also try always to have, uh, you know, to calculate some ROI on any you know, tech investment. However, it's mostly infrastructure based. So it's, uh, they're, they're much, the investment is much longer. So a, a classic ROI, which is a, like a project or, or, you know, in advertising would be more campaigning, is very hard to, 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 to measure sometimes if there are only mm -hmm. so a lot of soft skills and KPIs involved. I think it's, it's, um, there are some ways to do it, but it's always tricky and you need to be very specific uh, in every company, it's, it's different. It's not so, there's no easy ROI um, uh, measurement, I think it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's a mixture of ROI plus mm -hmm. some soft factors. Right, and when, if, if you have processes on it, for example, as uh, the, uh, the auto cropping or the smart cropping, as I said, there is a business case in it because you can also see, okay, which are, which are the costs now for production and how uh, will it be when you have the tech stack for it? So this is easy to see the ROI, but uh, when you have a, a process on it where um, it's only an organiz organizational part or a operational part on it, it's um, not so easy to make a, a physical ROI on it. And I think it's quite a little bit of a dangerous to make an ROI on everything um, strict to um, uh, not to be able to uh, react flexible on this part. There are some use cases where you can do it, but in other use cases where it's organizational or more create creativity a part of it, I think it's um, not so easy to have a fixed uh, RI KPI on it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. There is another question to you, uh, Renata. Uh, do you regularly evaluate your MarTech stack systematically? <laughs> no. No, not at all. Uh, systematically not. Um, mm -hmm. uh, this uh, is the part of the strategic board um, I, I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, our idea is to to make in the strategic board uh, uh, upcoming um, um, uh, look on the roadmap to see um, is there are we on the right way? Um, are we fulfilling the 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 targets also from from our corporates, from our departments, uh, from our uh, goals we have um, as um, a marketing department or a sales department? Um, but it's not now implemented systematically. It's uh, more a little bit of. Um, see it with your your fingertips or uh, to 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 speak with the stakeholder is it uh, the right way but uh, i think we have to push it a little bit more on a strategic way and a little bit more on a higher level mm -hmm. okay um, i see no more questions but uh, as we already are a little bit over time uh, let me say thank you especially to you renata for giving us this uh, very, really really good and uh, informative insights and thank you sasha and let me just give you an outlook uh, for our tomorrow uh, keynote which is finally then the closing of this week of uh, webinars and don't miss that one. It will be at uh, 4 p.m. Uh, the keynote from Scott Brinker and we uh, already saw today some uh, or heard also some uh, of his um, uh, yeah, let's say key topics like the MarTech landscape and, and everything which is basically impacting us uh, in building a MarTech stack and uh, therefore we are really looking forward to tomorrow and uh, hope that uh, a lot of uh, um, participants will join tomorrow again. So uh, thanks a lot and take care. Bye-bye.